Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how you can create a dynamic print area for your workbook. Let's say you regularly delete or add rows to a certain table or range and you don't want to have to keep redefining the print area. This method that we're going to show today will help you automatically and dynamically adjust the print area of your worksheet. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here we have a small data range and you can see I have nine columns of data. The first column just numbers the rows from 1 to 50, but I only have 16 items filled in. And if I go to File and Print, you can see it wants to print, uh, in fact, two pages of data. And I really only want to print the first 16. So I'm going to go back here. I also want to note that if we go to Formulas and Name Manager, notice that nothing is defined in the Name Manager here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the range I want to print. I'm going to go to Page Layout and print area, set print area. So now that's defined. And if I went to file, print, notice it'll only print those first 16 items along with my header. But also note if I go to formula and name manager, now there is a named range called print area that defines it as sheet 1 A1 to I17. And that's perfect. However, if I add a few more rows here, I'm going to just copy that and go down and paste that. And if I go to File, Print, notice it'll still only print those first 16 rows. I have to manually adjust the print area to add or, in some cases, remove the rows that I do or don't want to include. So let's see how we can automatically adjust that with Excel. So the first thing we're going to do is create another named range and define the print area dynamically by using a formula. So I'm going to go to the Formulas tab. I'm going to click Name Manager. I'm going to say New. And I'm going to call this DYN Print for Dynamic Print. And in the formula or refers to, I'm going to type equals offset parentheses. I'm going to choose A1 as my starting point, comma. I'm going to go down 0 over 0. Now I have to define the height and width of the range I want to print. So I'm going to use the count of function. And I'm going to select column I for that. So it's going to count the items in column I to define the height of the range. I'll close my counter function, comma, and then the width of my range is going to be 9 because it's 9 columns. I'll close that and I'll say OK. So now I have my print area that was defined before and now a new name item in the name manager called DYN print. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select print area and I'm going to go down into the formula area here and instead of having it be defined as A1 to I17, I'm going to have it be defined as DYNPRINT, which is that named range that we just created with the offset formula. I'll say close. It's going to ask me to save it. Now, if I go to File, Print, you'll see it has the first 16 rows of data plus the headers set there. If I add a few rows, I'm just going to copy this area here and down to 24. If I go to File, Print, notice it's dynamically adjusted my print area because of the offset function that I put in the Name Manager for print area that defines it to go to row 24. If instead I maybe delete everything except for the first seven rows, I go to File, Print, and you can see it automatically adjusted to only include the first seven rows of my data range to print. So 
I'm going to hit Control Z just to undo that. Control Z again just to get it back to my original 16. So what does the offset function do? Well, we've used offset in many, many of the tutorials that I've done. But just to, as a refresher, if I type equals offset, you can see it returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. I'll hit Tab. And what you want to start is with a reference. From that reference, say how many rows down you want to go to start. How many columns over do you want to go from that starting point. In our case, we put 0 and 0 because I want to start at cell A1 as my beginning point. Then how high do you want the range? That's where we use the count a function in column I to count the number of items there. And that's how high the range would be. And then in the width, we use 9 to define 9 columns that we want to print. So by using offset as one of the items in the name manager and define the print area based on that offset function in the dying print name range that we created, we were able to dynamically create a print area that you can use. And it will automatically adjust as you add or delete rows from your data range. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.